Just been looking at some of the comments on the last video. <laughs> what the hell? I've never seen so many whining people in one place apart from an old people's home. Oh, he's clickbaiting. Oh. I don't really think that a lot of people writing these comments actually know how YouTube works. I mean, was the last thumbnail and title of the video actually that bad? There was a crossover a map that has technically been cancelled. All the nodes have been erased from it. It still exists, but it's just nothing like it was before. Look, it was a bit of fun, bit of sensationalism. I'm sorry if it offended anyone obviously did but to be honest everyone wants more people on the mesh and a 15,000 view video is going to be better than 2,000. Anyway, on to more interesting stuff. We're gonna talk about antennas today. So there's a lot of mystery around antennas. You know, there's lots of antennas out there. They're cheaply available. You can get them from Amazon, eBay, China, AliExpress, all of those places. But how do you know when you get these things? Are they actually working? Are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? And most people, including me for a long time, just get antennas and just put them on devices and just, you don't really know if they're working or not. So how can we really know if they're any good? So later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how you can test your antennas at home with a cheap bit of gear but first I'm going to show you something that I've not seen anybody else do yet and that is x-ray a bunch of popular antennas this is going to be interesting so first up into the x-ray machine when a pretty well-known brand now especially in the UK um, Paradar they make a bunch of kind of 868 megahertz antennas um, but what you're looking at here is the 6.5 dBi gain version so how cool is this we can see straight through the fiberglass kind of casing of this antenna and, and right into the center and you can see the elements there so this kind of looks like a collinear um, sort of array and yeah nothing suspect in there at all looks pretty good next up onto this one very popular brand alpha and this is one of their i don't know if it's a new antenna but it's, it's an 868 megahertz antenna um, it's been featured in a video recently and um, it uses an end connector on the bottom and yeah you can see at the top there's a bit of a bent bit of wire up there now this would probably work because antennas don't technically have to be straight but you might get a weird radiation pattern off this um, you can see the bottom part of the section of the antenna is actually like a ground so it's kind of like a, a ground plane antenna the bottom section is obviously made of a very thin metal now we move on to the next one this looks super sus doesn't it so what we're looking at here is a complete meshtastic node based on um, the rack products um, so you can see the enclosure and, and everything else and then obviously the antenna and as you'd expect rack a pretty high quality product so the antenna looks pretty good as well so you've got the similar design to before but they've actually called the wire on that top element to reduce space um, and that is kind of that's quite a popular way of doing it so so far so good no horror stories everything's looking kind of as you probably expect if you open one of these up you'd find these this inside and you wouldn't be surprised but then <laughs> we move on to this one um i can't remember the exact brand name of this but it, it resembled the word juicy fruit i think <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah this one is definitely a lemon um it, look at it i mean basically it's em half empty more than half empty so this one really isn't good um and this would have been sold as a high gain antenna um and that's why obviously it's going to be a bit longer than some of the others you'd expect a proper one to look more like the rack one um but look yeah this one's just yeah that that is not good at all so yeah we've definitely found the dodgy one and the crazy thing is that antenna would still work, but it's definitely not a high gain antenna. And you see no difference over something, you know, that was half the size. So you're just carrying around that much extra plastic for no reason. Anyway, this is all a bit of fun, shoving a few antennas in an x-ray machine. Obviously you can't do that at home, but it is quite interesting to see, isn't it? I think we'll be testing more antennas. It'll be quite useful for our upcoming store so you can see exactly what you're buying. Anyway, how can you test antennas at home? You can do it with this little device. It's called a Nano VNA. And you can pick these up for as low as 50 quid now, which is really, really good. These things used to be the reserve of the most seasoned RF engineer, and now they're available to everyone. So what this does in its most simple form, it's a very advanced bit of kit. You can do lots of things, but essentially the most useful feature of this is the most basic one, which allows you to measure the SWR of an antenna. So here we're testing the little Paradol Whip antenna. No, I haven't x-rayed this. Um, but I do know this works very very well this antenna these are just sort of like router antennas they sort of twist around funnily enough they actually work quite well in a 90 degree angle which is kind of you know where most of these will be used but if we take a closer look at the screen so I'm doing this with my main camera but you can see here the SWR is 1.4 or so and it's kind of indicated by this kind of dip here now that's kind of indicating that the antenna is is pretty resonant in that area it's, it's very good actually for, for us 
for kind of like a small antenna. And you see this number one pointer here is on 870 megahertz, which is around the sort of mesh-tastic frequency. 869 is, is kind of where it is in the UK. Now, generally, you want that SWR to be as close to one-to-one -to -one as possible, because that means that you're not reflecting any power back into the radio. And the more unsuitable the antenna is, the higher that SWR will be. And if it's really high, it can even damage your radio. I will say these things do need to be calibrated every time you use them to get accurate results. And I'll leave some links below to um, some good videos explaining this, because it's definitely worth watching a dedicated video if you've got one of these and you want to know how to use it. It's really interesting, actually. And I'll also leave a link below to where you can get these as well. What is pretty cool is you can test these little small antennas that come with the little Heltec nodes um, by using one of these little or SMA um, to IPEX or U.FL connectors. You can see this one is not particularly great, 2.4 SWR. And I don't know if this is down to manufacturing or what, or maybe it's just my poor antenna position in here, but it doesn't seem to make a difference too much um, where it is. 880 megahertz is where it's mostly resonant, this antenna. If you go to like 868 or, or thereabouts, 870, no, it's not too bad. It's, it's on the higher side. This is probably one of the better ones of this type that I've seen for sure. So they all vary. That's the thing. And what you find with a lot of these little antennas is they're sort of like designed for two bands, 868 right the way up to 915. So covering the EU to the US band. So you end up with that dip in the middle. That's why we, we've seen that dip that's actually in the around the 890, um, I'm presuming. So yeah, not great. But the good news is there are some dedicated 868 megahertz antennas like this Paradar one, um, which we know is resonant on 868 and it's not like designed for, for the higher band as well. So yeah, it's all interesting stuff. Antennas are a massive part of this hobby. Um, and you, as you can see, when you x-ray these things, if you think there's something different in there than just wire and metal, <laughs> then yeah, think again. Because pretty much all antennas are just made of wire. And that's why they're pretty easy to DIY as well. That's the subject for another video. Hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Catch you next time. And remember, this is a hobby. It's meant to be fun.